this is a special moment that these people realize is special, and this is not something that's ever going to happen again. Dayton basketball will be good again. They will be, dare I say, a top 10 team at some point in their program's history again. They will never have a season like this ever again. <laughs> On today's episode of Titus and Tate, we will be talking about my trip back to the Midwest. I mm-hmm. was in the building, UD Arena, for the Obi Toppin Senior Night. That wasn't actually a senior night because he's only a sophomore, mm-hmm. but it might as well have been Obi Toppin Senior Night. A farewell of sorts. A farewell, yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I want to talk about that experience. I also went up to East Lansing, and I did witness Cassius Winston's real senior night, um, senior day. Uh, Chris Holtman was not a fan of it, Tate. Yeah, yeah. He basically said it was PDA. Happy. He said, "I yeah. don't want to see this. I, yeah. I don't want to see anyone yeah. kissing anyone on the court." Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over things I saw. Boots on the ground journalism. That's yeah, what we're at, great at a time here. when people were like, "You stay at home. Don't mm-hmm. travel anywhere. Don't no. go to an airport." You were like, "No, I will be there for college game day because Dayton. Right now, we would say Dayton is probably number one on our list of teams. Right that we support that we love that like yeah, yeah, is yeah. fun is like yeah Dayton number one exciting yeah. similar to Virginia last year Dayton right, number one right. which is you know bodes well for Dayton right so they're number one on the list and then of course you see Ohio State Chris Holtman trying yeah. to get the the troops rallied. You're there. You saw right. you saw Cassius Winston have his moment. It was it was me feeling big out weekend. my my two favorite teams as a um yeah after the day, after the Dayton game Big Cat texted me he goes he goes congratulations on uh uh he goes you're you're about to win back to back national your teams are about to win back to back national Who championships. Thought? I was like, Who would have thought? Man. That's where you are. It's been a great run for me. <laughs> I mean, look, UCLA, right? They just win the Pac-12. Do you have That's a team? all I was gonna say. Yeah. We have the the Pac-12 update. We got to get to, um, and we're gonna we're gonna play a fun little game uh, at the end that that I pitched to Tate, where we uh, are going to take each team and pick a strain of coronavirus that they're. I, I'm just kidding. I'm I'm kidding. That's not what we're going to. They're do. yelling at us. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's not what we're going to do. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have some fun. The regular season is over. We're gonna put a nice little bow on it. All right, it's Monday night. We're back in the pod studio. We just witnessed. Uh, it, it's pretty late for us this this time around. It's uh, it's about 11 p.m. here on the West Coast. We stayed up, watched uh, mm-hmm. Jordan Ford hit the big game winner for St. Mary's to to knock off BYU, a team that we were really excited about. Um, I'm glad we waited to record <laughs> until after that game take because we probably would have spent a lot of time talking about how great BYU is. Yeah, there's one like of those few times where usually when we get to the studio, you're like, we got to watch this game, make sure we see this because you know could you know California could upset Stanford tonight. Right. That may affect yeah. the Pac-12 update, and I'm like. Look, if that were to happen, I would dress it on the next podcast. You know what I mean? If that's really yeah. what's going to change the update, I'll do that. But tonight, thank goodness that happened because Mark Pope was going to be basically the star of my whole show. I was going to say that BYU was the team to pick, team to ride. Not that you know one game can change all that, but it would have looked really stupid if you uh, know, they lost last night, and that's all I spent my time doing tonight. So here yeah, we are. Uh, so Mark Pope, our guy, a mm-hmm. uh, guy that we fell in love with in Maui, gets called for a technical foul, a needless technical foul. Mm-hmm. Uh St. Mary sits both free throws, and then they end up winning by one. Your thoughts? There's always an irony <laughs> when you know a coach is yelling at an official, call the foul, and then the official calls a foul, which yep. is a technical foul, yep. and then they proceed to continue to say, "What do they call, call the foul? What do they call that? Like a monkey's paw or something? Where like you get your wish, but it's not, but it's not, not like really exactly what you said. <laughs> not you know what you had. I mean? it's, it's like when yeah. you get three wishes, but it's like some evil person. Yeah. And you're like, wait a second, yeah. I don't think these are the kind of wishes I want. That's uh, what Mark Pope was dealing with. Um, are you saying that he threw the game? No, ooh, eh. <laughs> maybe. Do you think like Tita because the out. the West Coast Conference is in Vegas, the uh, BYU kids like they they wanted to throw the game because they were like, this is a, this is Sin City. Mm-hmm. This is not. I didn't know we were going to Sodom lifestyle. and Gomorrah. Yeah, this is not conducive to our lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Let's go back home, please. Yes. and they purposely. Yeah, and they just wanted extra rest for the NCAA tournament. And the Aussies of St. Mary's were like, we can spend yeah. all the time. <laughs> we're there. savages. We, yeah, yeah, we love the Cosmopolitan. Can we go back tonight? Jock's like, let's get the boys yeah. together and celebrate because yes. we got a big win. <laughs> Speaking of Jordan uh, Ford, though, quickly. Yeah. A lot of Malachi Flynn there. A lot of Kimba candidate in Jordan Ford. You know, we went a lot through, of all, the, Kimba yeah, we went through yeah. all the list of people that could be in these tournaments. A Kimba candidate. Jordan Ford is one of those guys. And funny enough, Seth Davis, uh, a guy that we both <laughs> – you know, follow. You we know, both have thoughts on. We have thoughts, but on Twitter, he put out that there's no. Way, I thought it was a joke because it happened as it happened. But before Jordan Ford hit that <laughs> shot, he said, "There's no way Jordan Ford will hit the winning shot 
he did. And that is what Twitter is for, folks. The the irony yep. and the fun that mm-hmm. comes with all that. So yeah. that's where we are. Congratulations. We're all having Aries. fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm having a great Seth time. Seth Davis is, is 0 for 1 on his lock of the <laughs> tournament. Get ready for that. I'm excited for that. I'm, we got to be careful. Seth listens to the show, so uh, he, he definitely 100%. Allegedly. But yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's one one step away from being but, uh, His first lock, does it count as a, as a lock if he doesn't like uh, put padlocks over mm. over it and, and the chains? I'm so I excited for it. that. I'm a visual We guy. were talking about that as we were watching the game. I was, we were kind of like prepping for what we're going to do for Selection Sunday, mm-hmm. and I was reminding everyone uh, here at Fox about the Seth Davis lock where he uh, throughout the tournament where he takes mm-hmm. the chains. And it's like, Seth, we get it. We get the bit. You're putting chains over your mm-hmm. pick. It's we get it. It's a lock. We get it. What happens we when get it. it gets unlocked? I mean, it should be yeah, someone right. that was on set that picked the other team that just unlocks it and then just celebrates. Quick moment. He just goes. He spends fifteen minutes putting like another padlock. Here goes this chain, and then you cut to Charles Barkley just like pinching the top of his nose, yes. just like God damn it, I'm in the Hall of Fame, and I have to sit here and yeah. watch practicing how to say Ayo Dunsumu. Yeah, how many I'm times? So like Charles, just don't say his name. Just don't say it. I just, He's like in his, in his Kofi point. Cockburn, the Cockburn, like, Coburn, Desumu, John, and uh, John. Shaunas Billy yeah. to hear uh, Barkley try those. That's no shot. Great. Um, speaking of Illinois, here, d- horrible segue. Illinois <laughs> uh, Midwest. My trip to the Midwest state. I want to talk about this. Um, I impulsively decided I wanted to go watch Dayton's final game mm-hmm. at UD Arena, and here's why. Dayton has been the most fun team in college basketball from the moment we saw them in Maui. I would say even before the first game tipped off in Maui. Um, you, you and I were picking up on the vibes of, of the Dayton team hanging out together, uh, at the hotel. We stayed at the same hotel as them. I feel like a broken record. I feel like I've said this a million times. I don't know if we've really talked about it much on the pod. I think we did during Maui, but, um, you could just tell like the guys loved each other and, and it caught my attention because I've been on a team that went to a final four and lost in a national championship game. I've been on a team that went to the NIT and had talented players, but, uh, the chemistry wasn't there and we ended up kind of sucking Mm -hmm. and there's a very obvious you can just sense it when you're around guys who like enjoy each other's company and enjoy being on a team together and that was the Dayton Flyers in Maui before the games even tipped off I was like wow this team seems to love each other Mm -hmm. um Anthony Grant's kids are playing catch with Obi Toppin on the beach playing throwing the football around it was like just the whole it just felt like a really family thing and then the games tip off and they're super fun to watch Obi Toppin just like immediately I'll be honest didn't know a lot about the guy before the start of the Mm -hmm. season from the, the opening tip of the uh, who they play first was it was it uh, 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 Georgia? No, yes, it was. It, it was, was the very first yeah, game yeah, of the, yeah. the Anthony it was Georgia. Edwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We we're, were excited to see Anthony Edwards play. It was the very first game of the uh, the Maui Invitational. Tips off, and you're like, oh my god, Obi Top, and oh my god, this Dayton team. There's something special. Um, and from there, they they they've had our hearts. Tate, is that fair to say? It's fair to say, and yeah. it's also fair to say that they had college game day there in Dayton, which yep. was like Jay Billis. They did the whole promotional thing where. He's dressed up like, you know, he's going to take you on this this ride of a lifetime. The Mile High Club is probably what they were insinuating with this whole thing. But the ratings were going to shoot through the roof. The Dayton yep. fans were going crazy. So I just kind of want to ask, like, on TV, it looked like the city of Dayton was losing its mind. You were there, boots the, on the ground. The city was losing its mind. Yeah, like this Great. was this was a this was a very tough ticket to get. The special thank you to the the people of uh, University of Dayton for hooking mm-hmm. me up. They 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 got me and my brother um, into the arena. It was nice. Uh, they did not need to do that. But yeah, I was told the tickets were were impossible to come by. They mm-hmm. were very a, a very tough ticket after the game. So Dayton wins, and I, I want to talk about Obi Top and 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 how Dayton ended up winning this game in a second, but. Um, the game ends and it just felt like nobody wanted to leave. It felt like a party. It, that, that was one of the coolest things. And I think the reason I wanted to be there is because I knew, uh, I identified that this was like a special moment in time. Um, and part of it, like living in Ohio for so long, like it, it was cool that it was happening in Dayton, which was like, I kind of feel like a similar community to where I had lived for so long. But even if it was happening anywhere in the world, like you identify that this is a special moment that these people realize is special, and this is not something that's ever going to happen again. Dayton basketball will be good again. They will be, dare I say, a top 10 team at some point in their program's history again. They will never have a season like this ever again um, where you have like a guy like Obi Toppin who's just just comes out of nowhere and is just like blowing everyone's minds, where they haven't lost a game in regulation all year. Um, just everything that's happened has, has just fallen into place. And I think those people realize it because they're they're smart basketball fans. That's why the first four is played in Dayton mm-hmm. is because they realize people in Dayton love bat college basketball. They get college basketball, um, and that they're all about it. And the people of Dayton, the other thing that's cool about them, um, and it's cool of a lot of it's it's similar to a lot of places in Ohio, is that they will straight up tell you to your face that there's nothing to do in their town. They're like like 
this is similar to like people from Cleveland. Mm-hmm. You talk to them, they're like, we have nothing to do here. That's why we love the Browns and we love the Indians and the Cavs. Like, we, mm-hmm. we have nothing else. Buffalo. One yeah. Of those towns. Buffalo is yeah. the same way. They're like, like where? Green like, Bay. It's a badge of honor. It's like mm-hmm. our town is boring as shit, but God damn it, we have this sports team that we rally behind and we love. Mm-hmm. And that is the Dayton Flyers to that city. And um, it's, it was just so cool. Like, after the game was over, nobody wanted to go home. The place just was in complete ecstasy. Should we talk about the Obi Top and Dunks? Because, uh, First of all, at halftime, I go down to the media room mm-hmm. and um, I'm I'm ch- I'm chopping it up with some media people and and they're ta- they're asking me what my what they what I think about the game so far because um, it was a pretty close game. I can't remember what the halftime score was, but Dayton was not playing particularly well. They were down early, of course. You know, yeah. it, it was classic. And that's what alert. I said. Yeah. I told them they're like as an unbiased because they get they were getting nervous. Like I'm worried. All right, we're gonna lose. And I and I and I gave them your spiel, which is like this is just upset watch special. Mm-hmm. They're purposely keeping it close. Then they're gonna flip the switch. Um, and then with like 11, 12 minutes left, they start to flip the switch. I turn to my brother. I'm like, here it comes. You can feel it happening. Uh, it, it was like an 8-0 run at the time. And the place is going crazy. I forget like the sequence of plays that happened, but uh, it's an 8-0 run, and they can sense it, and they're starting to pull away. And, and it's, it's, it ends up being a 16-0 run. Ends up being a 16-0 run. But when it was like 8, 10, whatever, I turn to my brother, and I say, all we need now is the OB top and dunk, and this place is going to explode. Mm-hmm. OB top and back sky down. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jumps up, throws the ball in, doesn't doesn't touch the rim. The Blake Griffin, yeah, 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 the Blake Griffin just throws it. The Dwight Howard in the dunk contest, <laughs> just throws the ball down. The place goes crazy. The people just losing their minds. Obviously, uh, a couple plays later, on a fast break, does like a one eighty three sixty. Does it really matter how many degrees he turned? No, it was like cool to see him spin like. Just bam, bam, one after the other. Now people are like, all the Luca Garza fans are like, it wasn't even a three sixty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's Luka, a 220 at best. Luca Garza fans are like, but was he in a triple threat position when he did it? <laughs> Where if was not, his pivot foot? Could he do the 360 <laughs> against the Big Ten schedule? I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. Can't do 360s <laughs> in the Big Ten. It's too physical. It's too physical of a league. He tries that. He tries to do that in Champaign, Illinois. He's getting clotheslined. I'm mm. telling you, that's just the way it is. Um, he does that, and then now at this point, people are are are. Uh, it's it's like the Vince McMahon. You seen the Vince McMahon video where uh, uh, the GIF where Vince McMahon is like just slowly losing. It. He's like, oh, oh, mm-hmm. oh, and then mm-hmm. he falls backwards in his chair. Mm-hmm. That was this sequence with Obi Toppin, because uh, he 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 tops it all off going between his legs. Which, if going between your legs at any point in time, even in warm ups, mm-hmm. if if you're wit- if you're a Dayton fan witnessing Obi Toppin dunk between his legs and it's warm ups. You're losing your mind. You're like, this is the coolest thing ever. To see him do it in a game makes it even cooler. To see him do it after doing those other two dunks, I mean, I felt like I was. Who's the guy? Um, who's the the preacher that like touches people, makes them fall? The Benny Hinn, I, Benny <laughs> Benny Hanna. Am I? Ben, ben, definitely Benny not Hinn. Benny Hanna, but <laughs> Benny, Benny Hinn. <laughs> it's Benny Hinn. I think. I think that's the guy's name. You know what I'm talking about? He's like he speaks if it's in tongues. Benny Hanna, then I have not. I have lost track of his the, career path. The guy. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's the same guy. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he speaks in tongues. He makes you fall over, yeah. and then he builds like an onion you volcano. You fall over from eating so much food. You're like, I'm, I gotta pass out. And he throws a shrimp and catches it in his hat at church. Thumbs up. No, the guy who uh, he speaks yeah. in tongues, yeah, and then he pushes yeah. your forehead, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, and you're like, mm-hmm. I don't know, have an orgasm and fall back. Say the righteous gemstones yeah. of this. Yeah, the, yeah, yes, yeah. that is what a, that is what UD Arena was with Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin is Benny Benny Hinn, Benny Hanna. That's that's who Obi Toppin is. He's he just like. He gets the ball. He turns to all the Dayton fans, and he's like, "You guys ready?" Mm-hmm. Goes between his legs and just like pushes them all, and they're like, "Oh!" And they like fall back. It was it was like witnessing a religious experience, um, and it was so cool to be there to see it. I would say this: if we're going to use the Benny Hanna thing, then I would say <laughs> Anthony Grant is Benny Hanna. Uh, Obi Toppin is Steve Aoki. For people that don't know, Steve Aoki, the DJ, is the son of the founder of Benny Hanna. Is that the, is Steve Aoki the Black Eyed Peas guy? Steve Aoki is the DJ. I, th- does I he know. have a song with a black? I'm sure he does. He probably, know. Let's just say he does. And then Dev, his sister, is in Fast and the Furious. Too Fast, mm-hmm. Too Furious. So that is Jalen Crutcher. So that okay. if you want right. to <laughs> compare the whole Dayton family to the Aoki family, that's a hell of a metaphor. Via Benihana, there it is for you. Yeah. And again, the Dayton Flyers, Obadiah Toppin. I just mm-hmm. want to remind people, a man by the name of Obadiah is throwing down dunks between his legs. He's throwing down dunks that are beyond 180 at the very least. And the Dayton Flyers, they finished runner-up, I think, to UCLA in 67. Like, they've mm-hmm. been on the national scale before. That's yeah, we why, remember. I, I remember that. I remember that game. Yeah. I, I, you know what's funny? I was at that game. <laughs> I was watching Stephen A. Smith this morning, and he was talking about LeBron James. And this is a quick tangent because it was funny. And it just made me think about all sports media and us in general. You know, He was talking about LeBron James. like, we're not comparing him to present players. We're comparing him to the Mount Rushmore. And he's, like, yelling. <laughs> and he was talking about how he covered – 
Kareem and how he covered Bill Russell. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> what? Like, this is amazing. You know what I mean? It's it basically like Bill Russell put up with me covering yeah. him like this. You was know he the mean? original SI kid? Is that what we're learning? <laughs> Stephen A. Smith started. He was I don't asking think Bill Russell what he thought about Boston in 1966. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle the truth. But anyways, they just made me laugh because, like, as we talk about things in the past, like, the, the way that everyone talks, like, oh, of course. Of uh-huh. course you remember that. Yeah. And as I said that right there, I was like, that sounded very Stephen A. Smith, which made me happy. I'm patting myself on the back. Um, Love 1967. <laughs> the 60s, yeah. this team, I, Great year. I, I do like Dayton fans just definitively. They just say that this is the best team ever. No matter mm. what happens in the tournament, this is the, I do like that part of Dayton fans because, like, they they understand that teams in 2020 are better than teams in 1967. That's a that's a controversial take. Mm. Steve Kerr's on board with that. Where he was like, you know, he it, when he was asked like, is are the Warriors better than the Bulls were? And he's mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It seems like every other aspect of society advances and gets better, but I guess basketball teams are the one thing. No, that they don't. don't. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't believe that, go ask Charles Barkley. Because yeah, he'll tell you. Yeah. Um, UD Arena is awesome though. I I, mm-hmm. I highly recommend it. I've been to it. I went to one other Dayton game in my life. Uh, I want to say it was three or four years ago when Mo Alley Cox. I just remember Mo Alley Cox playing for VCU, um, and Dayton won, and it was cool. But it, it was you know like it wasn't it wasn't the same. They did OB top the Mo Alley Cox that was the tight end for the Colts. Yeah, right? same yeah. guy. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was cool, but it wasn't the same. And, and to be there for this game, the, the final the, the send off from the Dayton fans. Uh, not that you know, listen, they they travel well, so it's not like. Mm-hmm. There's not going to be any fan support in the NCAA tournament. But Anthony Grant's kids will be at the game. Yeah. That's all that really matters. Yeah, but this was the final uh, thing in front of the home crowd. Really cool arena. Looks like the, the looks like it has wings. It's got like the uh, the the way it's all set up. The it's three a great stripes uh, on the side. Yeah, yeah. it's a great. Uh, it's perfect arena for the first four. Actually, I mean, I I don't know if we really need to spend a lot of time explaining like that part of it, but I I don't know. I, there's probably somebody listening that's like scratching their head. That I've never understood why they play the first four in Dayton. Um, I'll tell you why, because the fans are awesome. They'll come to any college. They have there's nothing to do there, so mm-hmm. they'll come to the game. And the arena is awesome, and uh, it all works out well. So. And what year was that arena built for all the fans? 1967, 1969. Oh, what? It was 69. There wow. you go. How about a great, that? A great year. How Once upon that? a time <laughs> in Dayton, Ohio. Um. So what? What else was I going to say? Uh, uh, great. So you're done with that. Obi Toppin, and now I think at the end of the weekend, yeah. right? Here's the wrap up from the media side. Me in Los Angeles, watching everything that's yep. happening in Dayton. It's basically. We've decided College Game Day goes there to give him his final headline, and we say the regular season is won by the Dayton Flyers. They were undefeated, as you said, with uh, with regu- in regulation, not going over. And can I just say? Can I just say to the undefeated point? Like, first of all, they're not undefeated. We're having some fun with that. They're, no, they're they undefeated. Lost two games, but they they've not lost in regulation, which is you know that's saying something. That's saying something that matters. That matters to me. And I understand that their schedule is not the best. This mm-hmm. is this has become a big uh, uh, talking point because. It's it's Obi Toppin versus Luka Garza. And the Iowa fans are coming out in full force, doing a last second push, um, trying to get Garza the national player of the year. He's not going to win. He's he just give it up. Like just be happy for your guy. He won Big Ten Player of the Year. That's never happened from an Iowa player ever. That's exciting. We like Luka Garza. America really really likes Luka Garza, but Luka Garza does not go between his legs and dunking games. Luka and this idea that like Obi Toppin couldn't do this in the Big Ten, he could. Mm-hmm. Use your brain. Use your mm-hmm. eyeballs in your brain. Mm-hmm. Watch the kid play basketball. He could very easily do it in the Big Ten. He did it against Kansas, mm-hmm. he, which is the best team by far in the country, the best defense by far in the country. He put up 18-9 and nine against Kansas and Maui. He, the, the kid's insane. He, he's got the longest arms. He's built like Amari Stoudemire, but he can cross people up and go behind his back and shoot threes. I, what is this nonsense that he couldn't do it in the Big Ten, Tate? He could. Well, well, Luca Garza, again, he's going around, he's doing the whole media thing. You know, he's letting people know that he is the face of college basketball. And everyone's like, oh, that's why I haven't watched that much this year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. That makes sense. Regardless, though, like you said, first Iowa player to win Big Ten Player of the Year. So congratulations to Luca Garza. And I think, you know, I saw this video. Brad Underwood was walking into the arena with, with, for Illinois, and there was a Fran McCaffrey, and he, like, signed his he face. Signed his, he signed yeah. Fran McCaffrey's face. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that has something to play with it with America, too, because when I think of Iowa, I don't think of Luca Garza, despite him being mm-hmm. a great player. I think of Fran McCaffrey. Yeah. Um, but e- even, even if you want to point out, that Dayton has played a garbage schedule, which I'm not going to defend their schedule except for the fact that, like, one, they played in the Maui Invitational, which, like, signing up to do that is saying we're signing up for the big boys. Two, uh, they, they, they have no control over the A-10, like how good the A-10 is. Usually the A-10 is a pretty good league. It's not it's not horrible this year. And but Richmond's it's not way better than is. people think. So yeah. The A-10 is a good league. But thirdly, even if you take a team uh, – here's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually calculate this. Let's say what, – what would you say – 
uh, it, Dayton, again, on, on any given A-10 game, Tate, let's say, any given A-10 game, what is Dayton's chances of winning that game? Would you, mm. like, what, what do you put it 69%. At? Okay, we'll call it 69% chance. A little math lesson for you, for you folks out there. To the 18th power, that, that gives them, wait a second. <laughs> I did this wrong. <laughs> My calculator. Uh, 69%. So we're doing 0. 0.69. This That's is Joe Lenardi before the 18. cameras turn on right. at ESPN. He's like, let me just do this math real quick. Wait, is that right? Holy shit. It's Archie like Miller's 0. not going to make the tournament? What? The point is, it's a very small number. Um, <laughs> it's like less than 1%. If if you take, if you say that every game that Dayton's going into, they have like mm-hmm. a, even if you had like a 90% chance to win that game, to do that 18 times in a row, mm-hmm. or however many times in a row they did it in the A 10, um, it's still impressive because like teams trip up. We know this about college basketball. Upsets happen. At some point in the season, every single team loses a game. So the fact that like Dayton, it, it does matter. I understand they're not playing anybody. I get it. But like look at San Diego State. San Diego, the Mountain West isn't great, mm-hmm. and they got tripped up. They, they, that happens. It didn't happen to Dayton. So that matters. That matters to me. I don't know. It matters to all the frequent flyers, and it also matters to, to everyone that's watched Dayton all year because at the end of the day, a lot of people want them to be the Cinderella story, but they're not really the Cinderella story. I mean, in Kim Palm, they're number yeah. three in the country. They're the that's number what, three team in the country, I would be, technically, by the I would be, people. I would be much more inclined to entertain the, the, the schedule argument if they had law If they were, instead of 29 and two, they were 26 and, and what would that be? Five. Yeah. <laughs> Math lesson today. If they were 26 and five mm-hmm. and they played a garbage schedule, but they were like, you know, sometimes they come out and they beat teams by 40 and then, you know, that they also lost at Fordham that one time. So, like, I don't know. How good are they? I would entertain that. But they're 18 and 0 in the A10, something that's only happened if they, if they, what what would we say the last show if they if they win the A ten tournament that's only ever happened one time in the history of that conference which is a good basketball conference I don't know I I I I think the whole like schedule like they're winning Iowa's not Obi Toppin's more fun Iowa plays at a faster pace Luca Garza does not play defense I love the kid to death I love watching Luca Garza he does not play de- he's a liability defensively Obi Toppin is not a liability defensively it's it, it's no con there's a reason that Iowa fans are so passionately arguing for Luka Garza, and Dayton fans are like, dude went between his legs. And that's all they're really saying for, for Obi Tom. Like, our guy's going to win, yeah, so we don't really need a campaign. Yeah, Just right watch here. the tape. Yeah, yeah, look at the highlights. And, Luka, and Iowa fans are like, now if you break down the points per game against mm-hmm. ranked teams this year, Luka is at, and we're like, you've lost me already. As soon as you say points per <laughs> possession, you start saying, yeah. you start pulling Obi. out the stat sheets, and I just go, <laughs> between the legs, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Play the <laughs> Show the dunks. Someone please play the dunks. <laughs> These people are not on House of Highlights. <laughs> um, can we talk about the second game I went to? Yes. Uh, so the very next day, I get in my car. I drive up to uh, through rural Ohio, um, middle of nowhere. There's no easy roads to get from Columbus to uh, East Lansing. But uh, I, 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 I went up there nonetheless. It, it reaffirmed my belief, just as a side tangent, Tate. <laughs> my only mission in life is I want to die in a town. Like, having lived in L.A. for the last year... Um, being back home for a little bit, it just it just resolidified. I want to die in a town where when you pull into the town, there's a sign that that shows how many state championships mm-hmm. the high schools won. Oh yeah, yeah, that's my hometown yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's knows. where I want to die. And mm-hmm. and I currently live in a place little where that's league not the titles. Case. Yes. You know, brought to you by this Buick yes. know, dealership yes. that is owned by this family that's been there. I want to I want a sign that says Division Four state champions mm-hmm. 1981, mm-hmm. and it's like fading, but like. Man, that's the pride and joy of that town. That is that is home to me. And also, like you're driving, and then all of a sudden you see like a massive campus, and you're like, "Oh my god, what college is that? I don't remember that college." And then you turn you turn and get a better view, and then there's like a Bass Pro Shop sign. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the yeah. America I love. Oh, there you this go. This is a, uh, and I got I got to see that. I got to drive up to East Lansing and and get a get a look at that. Uh, the Cassius Winston Senior Night, very emotional. Not a not a uh, uh, empty seat in the arena in the Breslin Center. Um, Michigan State is is coming into form. Did you watch this game? <laughs> yes, Tate? I mean it, it, they are they, yeah. they are scary, mm-hmm. and I'm not even saying that for the memes. Not even saying that for the. Uh, there's a reason this team is ranked number one to start the season, and we're starting to see it. And it's Rocket Watts. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and who would have thought? That, I hate that guy. Who would have thought Rocket Watts could pull this out? Uh, some saying that they're shocked that you know he wasn't getting more PT early. No, I'm kidding. Of course, Cassius Winston figured it out. Cassius Winston had his moment. Tom Izzo, once again, has proven to everyone in the world. I mean, in Maui, we saw them not allowed to swim in the pool. And I know yeah. I've told that story plenty of times. But it's a great but story. It's a great story. because Watching <laughs> these guys, like, <laughs> dipping their toes. Like, they didn't the, even want to swim. Yeah. You know what I mean? But all of a sudden, now that they couldn't, they decided that they wanted to sit by the pool. 
and Tom Izzo's always teaching lessons, and there's always these little, you know, games within the game, you know, with Tom Izzo, and we saw that in this game, which is a tradition, as is tradition. We saw that, you know, the seniors come out of the game, Cassius Winston, <laughs> you know, everyone has to kiss the Spartan, and then your Ohio State Buc- Buckeyes, a coach of the program, a cop himself, Chris Holtman, a man that we both respect. Yeah. He eventually just broke because he was just saying, are you kidding me? Is w- it, what kind of ceremony is this? How long does this take? I'm going to defend my guy here. So first of okay. all, uh, the word gets out that Holtman was complaining about the the senior festivities. It was basically overheard and, yelling at a ref. Yeah, first of all, mm-hmm. we don't even know if he was yelling at a ref. He might have just said it offhand to a ref, mm-hmm. just in passing as like a, come on. As like, like, come get, on. Get on yeah, with the thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. What are we doing Took here? Get over with. Um, but it was presented to the Michigan State fans as though Chris Holtman prepared a statement, and like he, he approached mm-hmm. the podium in his press conference and was like, "Before I get started, I would like to go in on mm-hmm. the senior," which, which is not what happened. But secondly, I mean, it, it took a while. Like I don't know while. what else. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a process. I, mean, I was in the arena. The I was like clapping along because you know I I'm a classy fan. Uh, not to pat myself on the back too much, but I'm not afraid to cheer for the good story. So I'm I'm clapping for Cassius. I'm clapping for I I appreciate any walk on. So they put in Connor George, walk on to Michigan State. He's the senior uh, walk on. They put him in only to take him out. So like I'm I'm up clapping on my feet. I'm like respecting trillion the game for Connor yeah, George, respecting the trillion on senior night, all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I'm looking around like, my God, are we still doing Because Tom Izzo, at one point, he calls timeout, Tate. And I thought the reason he was calling timeout, he, he, first of all, he calls his son down. Steven Izzo his, uh, is, is also a walk-in. He calls him down, and you see uh, his son come down, and you think, okay, now his son's going to check in, and we're going to start the process. But then he sits his son down next to him, and his son's like sitting there for a couple minutes. And we're like, what are we doing, Tom? Can we put, the, can we put him in? Like, what are, What's going on here? And then he calls timeout. Like, Michigan State gets the ball. He calls timeout. And we're, when you're thinking to yourself, okay, here we go. Like in the timeout, as the team is walking to the to the bench, we're gonna get at least one of these guys is gonna get subbed out. And we mm-hmm. get the moment and whatever. No, no subs. He calls timeout just to say like, listen, here's the plan. We're gonna drag this out as long as possible. Mm-hmm. And then they go do it, and it it just it just took for it. He puts the walk on in to take the walk on out mm-hmm. to. And I think Holtman, as I was, was just like, listen, you kicked our ass. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. I'm all for it. But can I go home now? <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> it was like being. It was, he was being held prisoner. And I think Holtman was just like, I, I, I appreciate this. I love this. I just don't want to get my ass kicked any longer. Can I go home? That's all I want. And Tom is <laughs> sitting there, and he's just like, enjoy it. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, you will like yeah, this. He's like, kiss it. You he's know, like he's South like, Park, the guy, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when he ties Cartman up, and he's like, do you see? And he's yeah, showing him the yeah, pictures. Yes, yes. He said, yeah. the left hand. This is my other senior. Yes, do you yes, see? Yes. Do you see? <laughs> this is me at the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> this, this, this is just, yeah, just <laughs> keeps going through. <laughs> this, this is, is Cassius. Maui. This, this is, is this Justin is, Orange. Do you is, see? This is us playing Dayton. This is us beating Obi Toppin. Do you see? Oh man. Here we are. So uh that was going and then I, I did notice. So when it comes time to put in his son, Steven Izzo, mm-hmm. I'm calling this out because it deserves to be called out. Tom puts in Steven Izzo for Cassius Winston to subconsciously tie the thunderous applause mm-hmm. to the visual of Steven Izzo entering yes. the game. You understand what happened mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. So he set it up so his son would get the biggest cheer. Mm-hmm. Even though the people were cheering for Cassius Winston, subconsciously, now when they see Steven Izzo check in, they're going to remember. I, I don't remember why, but I cheered for him so loud last time. Suddenly mm-hmm. now I'm going to keep cheering for him. Bingo, bango, bongo. That's why he's a master. <laughs> and Izzo gets the loudest cheer because at the end of the day in college basketball, right, we all know the, the stars are the coaches, and Tom Izzo is the real star in Michigan State. So even though Cassius Winston, you know, visually and, you know, aesthetically, and as you watch yeah. him play, you know Cassius Winston is the star. Tom Izzo is really the star. He's the star. And that was yeah. the whole point of this. You know, he was like, this is a moment for this team, my team. We've gotten to this point. We're going to make this a weighted moment. And Chris Holtman, shut up. And just sit there <laughs> and t- take, take it, it and watch gonna, it. And Chris like Holtman it. has uh, enough respect for himself to say, I'm done with this. A few a few comments on, on Michigan State's team. Number one, uh, I knew Ohio State was going to – you're not going to beat Michigan State on Cassius Winston Senior Day, who mm-hmm. I would say – I'm not I'm not qualified to offer this opinion because I'm not a Michigan State fan, but I would say he, the Mount Rushmore of Michigan State like beloved players, mm-hmm. Magic obviously. Mm-hmm. You're putting Draymond on there, obviously. You're putting Mateen Cleese on there, and I think it's Cassius Winston. I think those are the four you lock in. Would you say? Mm. Is that the four? You're throwing who else are you throwing in there? <sighs> Goran <laughs> Sutan. I mean, I'm thinking like Kalen <laughs> Lucas. I mean, there's just get like, out of here. Uh, uh, I don't know who they. Um, uh. Uh, uh, I, 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 uh, to, to Mo the, Pete. Yeah. Mo, Mo Pete would be up there. Mo Pete would be up or there. Or just say Cassius Winston, you know, just cause of this moment. Um, maybe but, Steven Izzo. 
Who knows? I knew Ohio State was going to lose because you're not going to you're not beating cash points on a senior night with with the Big Ten on the line. Mm-hmm. But Rocket Watts banks in two threes in the first half. Tate. Well, I mean, at that point, I was like, I was I was hoping it'd at least be close. But when Rocket Watts banked in two, like the guy in the first half, I think he had like eleven points at halftime. Uh, I don't think he made a shot. I think he missed so bad that shots went in. That's like how it was going for him. And the point is. If Rocket Watts can continue to bank in threes at an absurd rate, <laughs> at an unsustainable rate, Tom look out, will win. Yeah, look out for Michigan State. He is State Mr. Rocket. March. No, uh, Michigan State's rolling. Cassius is uh, playing just carefree. He's having a ton of fun out there. Xavier Tillman is locking up everybody mm-hmm. in the Defensive world. Defensive player of the year yeah. in the Big Ten. Yeah. Um, Aaron Henry's coming along. The, I don't know. It's 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 clicking. It, stop me if you've heard this before, but everything seems to be clicking for Michigan Speaking State. of clicking and speaking of uh, bank shots that are basically ridiculous, erroneous, uh, irrelevant, and, and honestly should not happen in the plausible realm of existence in the world that we live in, Justin Robinson plays for Duke, and uh, he is son of David Robinson. And on his <laughs> senior night, he opened this game banking in a three. Did he really? Pro- it proceeded to have 12 points in this game. It basically Did he won, really? It basically won the game for Duke, hitting threes. Yeah, yeah. In fact, are you serious? Yeah, one of them, uh, he shot like basically a wedgie, and the ball was such a like shot from such a terrible angle that the ball shot up in the air like it was controlled by magic of some sort of <laughs> I don't even know demon. I don't know who could be sitting on the sideline, and the ball goes in. The admiral's there. It was a whole moment, and then as you brought up ridiculous bank shots, that Is was that how true? Justin Robinson banked in a three. I didn't watch a second of Duke Carolina. There was no need to watch. I was going to ask you what happened later. I mean, I just saw what Duke happened won, is Justin Robinson took Justin over. Robinson banked it, in it, threes. It, yeah. <laughs> To open the game, he banked in a three, pretty much. And he was starting with the seniors. I mean, this is one of those things wow. where it was just like, what yeah. is going on in this world? And Duke played a better game. That's got to be the least watched Duke Carolina game of all time. Maybe I'm just projecting my own, like, because mm-hmm. I didn't watch a second of it, so I'm just assuming that no one Shane Battier in the building. Play. Carlos yeah. Boozer in the building. Uh, Jay Billis was on his full Duke tilt, <laughs> like, all the way to the top. I've never heard him be so Duke. Uh, in fact, the entire game... Was the most Duke thing you've seen in quite some time. And I think that's why they had it the way it was set up. You know, they, we knew that they were going to win that game going into it. It was a 15 point deficit before you start that game. Just yeah. it's senior night. The only time that ever worked was because a crazy man by the name of Tyler Hansbro hit threes a la Justin Robinson yeah, there did the other night. And uh, yeah, that's the update for the Carolina Duke game. Really terrible, really hurt. Uh, but Duke. I- they're built for something special in the ACC tournament. Oh, oh, Duke! This is Duke. Duke is Duke is ready. <laughs> it's Greensboro. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Um, I had a couple of other comments on my Michigan State experience. Uh, number Sorry, one, I just got turned. No, 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 no. This is fine. Just, it's a just it's, ruffle it's, my feathers. It's it's fine. Um, you're allowed to talk on the show. Don't worry. <laughs> Michigan State. What about? Uh, they hung a banner after they won the Big Ten. This is apparently something they do. I wanted to talk this out with you because I was told a s- source close to the situation told me that Creighton. Also hung a banner when they clinched the Big East when they uh, they won on Saturday. Um, how do we feel about it? Because obviously San Diego State hanging a banner with like three regular season games left is a problem. I'm torn because technically the regular season is over, right? So like when Michigan when the clock hit zeros in the Breslin Center, Michigan State had clinched the Big Ten, but their season was technically over. So like I don't think I hated the move, but at the same time I didn't love it. They didn't cut down nets. That's mm-hmm. another interesting wrinkle. Um, so there's that as well to consider. And then there's also to consider uh, the whole, like, are, are they celebrating too soon type thing. I've never seen a place, like, in love with one team as much as that arena, the fan base is, and with the 2000 National Championship team. And rightfully so. It's the last Big Ten mm-hmm. title that's been won. But I feel like Michigan State loves that title team a little too much. And, and it's... Like, they have a whole shrine to it. They have, like, a video. They have, like, a statue. First of all, this horrific, horrendous-looking statue of Tom Izzo is in, like, the concourse. It's the, the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, it looks like a little troll. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, I, it, I don't know who who made that. It was, like, some art project that they let, like, an elementary school create a statue of the guy or what. Uh, but it was they, Stephen Izzo. Yeah, Stephen Izzo. <laughs> well, oh, I, I looked this up. Stephen Izzo was born in 2000. I feel mm-hmm. like there's some symmetry here. And this is his first year on the team, I believe. I feel like there's symmetry here. We're like, I, I'm starting to talk myself into Michigan State winning the title. But anyway, they have this whole shrine to the team. I, I think they show like the 2000 championship game on loop. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, they, there have been more pieces of the 2000 court given out. Like, it, th- first of all, they have like a big cutout of the the the, two, the court that was played on in 2000 
is like displayed in the arena. And then during the game, they do like a during the like the the under eight timeout in the first half. They're like, "Can we direct your attention to to aisle seven and section one twenty one, where everyone's going home with a piece of the two thousand court?" And I'm looking around like, "There's no way they have this much court. Like they're running out of court. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Like they they've given away, they must have given away the equivalent of thirty courts." To fans and like like mm-hmm. auctioned off. I don't know. So my point was like they're celebrating that too much. You're looking too far in the past. You're also like hanging the banner too soon. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out like why Michigan State gets to the title game but never gets the job done, Tate. And and that's what I noticed. That was my first trip to the Breslin Center as a fan. So. It does seem like it's one of those yeah. things where they are completely content with the one. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like when you reach the mountaintop and you yeah. keep pointing back to your. You know, it's kind of like when you're in high school quarterback and you're like, I won yeah. that one state championship, yeah. and then you know it's 15 years. Yeah, later, and then you put your like, sign in front of the town, yeah, and like, there it is. Yeah, it's like yeah. just friends when you come back home, and he's like still pounding. You're like, yeah, like, it's it's yeah. over. It's past. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, but then again, your coach is Mr. March, and even yeah, though he may be designed as a troll outside the stadium <laughs> to remember two thousand, he's one of the best coaches we have in college. It's basketball. one of, I mean, that's that statue's up there with the Cristiano Ronaldo bust. I mean, that was like it's a it's a tough look, especially like the faces those make it. It's it was strange. So uh, anyway, I don't know. They hung the banner. It was cool. Like I I we stuck around for the senior night thing. Like it, was, it is cool. Like Michigan State fans do not leave for senior night. And Izzo even said that. Like I appreciate you guys never leave. Uh, they, they try to make it like the best senior night uh, experience in college basketball. And it was cool because they do it after the game. They mm-hmm. do like the speeches and all that after. And none of the fans leave. And uh, to be there for Cassius Winston's final game in, in Breslin Center, it was pretty cool. So To miss Justin Robinson's final yeah. game in the Cameron Indoor uh, facility, that was pretty nice. Did yeah. I did, did I make no the right to decision to, to go to Dayton and to East Lansing and, and in the process give up? watching the Duke Carolina game, watching Justin Robinson bank in threes. I don't know. All right, Tate, let's get into it. Uh, Pac-12 update, what do you got for us? Well, here we are. So basically over the weekend, right, we had uh, our, our final – well, at the end of last week, right, we had Mick Cronin on the show in our last mm-hmm. broadcast, and Mick Cronin basically accepted the award of America's Sweetheart. You know, he is the <laughs> yeah, Meg Ryan yes. of college basketball. Everyone loves Mick Cronin. They want a piece of that man. Yep. And, you know, leading up to that, we had a showdown. We had, you know, USC playing UCLA – and a buzzer beater happens. USC happens to win that game. Yeah. And America, you would think, would say, wait a second, did Mick Ryan get plastic surgery? <laughs> uh, and they didn't because Mick Cronin is Mick Cronin. And yeah. they love Mick Cronin. We and love Mick Cronin. No one cared that that happened or, or they did not see that yeah. because the Pac-12 came out today and they said that is our coach. Mm-hmm. He is the leader of men that we've all been waiting for at UCLA. So Mick Cronin, congratulations. The Pac-12 coach of the year which leads off the Pac-12 update. One of the last regular season, the last regular season Pac-12 this is update it, yeah. of the year. Yeah, here we are. Uh, also, Oregon. Everyone is back on Oregon. In fact, Steve Lavin, Coach Lavin, who was on the show, I was watching uh, our quick hits of the day from Fox Sports uh, at Fox CBB. He said, the, what did he say? The quack attack is going... He basically just used like every single like coined phrase for how you would describe Oregon in, in a sentence. But basically, Oregon's going to win he the, went pack, on the, the mighty, Pac-12 tournament. He went on the Mighty Ducks IMDB page. Yeah, and the, like just the flying V <laughs> in the quack attack is going to bring a, a tournament championship back to Eugene, Oregon. You know, he's like, get your wings. Out. Like, he basically said everything. Ducks he, fly he, together. He said, like, every single one of those. Like, win the day. All the things that they've ever said, he said in that moment. And I said to myself... Okay, Oregon, that's the team to watch in the Pac-12 tournament. Peyton Pritchard, Pac-12 Player of the Year. Yep. We get that. We see that. We enjoy that. Chris Smith, a man that we talked about here on this program quite a bit for changing you know, what UCLA was doing, even though Mick Cronin was like, I don't know what's going on. I'll tell you what's going on. He was averaging about 12 points. Now he's averaging about 17 points, and yep. they're winning by about three points before mm. they were losing by about two points. That's about five L- points. A lot of math on this show today. <laughs> yeah, a lot of math. Chris Smith, most improved player. Uh, which I thought was an award he truly He actually deserved. won most improved player. Most improved player wow. in the Pac-12. Uh, and then the Pac-12 does That's probably... That's not even from season to season. That's from like no. December to March. Yes, literally. <laughs> we watched you in the Maui Invitational. Yeah. Who are you and where did you come from? Thank you for saving mixed season. Uh, and that's where we are with that. Uh, Tyler Bay... Uh, defensive player of the year okay. uh, you know pretty good for Colorado I think we don't talk about Colorado enough I know yeah, a lot well. of Colorado people are very upset about this they did they beat they Dayton beat Dayton they beat overtime, Dayton still beat them the last team to beat Dayton yeah so Colorado yeah. shout out to them uh, and final thing we should say every single conference is their first team and obviously a team in basketball is five people mm-hmm. when you, you think about your first team the Pac-12 does something a little different this year they say we don't need five guys. We need ten. Let's pay homage to the Pac-10. So for their, I assume is the first time. I don't want to look it up. They give I don't out, think it's the it's first time. It's not the first time. But it, 
I feel like I've read this it before. But it wouldn't be the Pac-12 update if you weren't wrong on some stuff. So, exactly. Yeah, say it. Exactly. It's the first time. <laughs> first time it's ever happened. Ten guys on the first team in the Pac-12. Chris Smith also on that list. Uh, and I don't want to read the rest of them, but it's the usual. Basically, if, if you played well in the Pac-12 this year, <laughs> you were on the first team. So congratulations, Remy Martin. You're on the first team. Congratulations, Isaiah Stewart. You're if on you, the first team. If you scored 20 points in a game, you get You're on the first, on the first team. team. <laughs> if I told you that a conference did this and you had no knowledge of which conference it was, and I told you to pick a conference that gives out first team bids to everybody. Pac-12. It would be Pac-12. It, it is it the participation Pac-12. award yeah. of conferences, and it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful existence. Congratulations to all our Pac-12 winners, our I was, Pac-10. I was thinking about this. So Mick Cronin loses on a buzzer beater at USC. Costs them the Pac-12 title. Yes. They would have got a share. They would have split it with Oregon. Um, and, and just how brutal that is that that happens that uh, – you know, the, like there are a few buzzer beaters. I think there are a few buzzer beaters this weekend. San Diego State mm-hmm. lost on a buzzer beater, mm-hmm. right? To Utah State. Utah State. The Kamar Aggies. Baldwin hit a buzzer beater to beat Xavier. But um, it's one of those things that like it just it it underscores how insane college basketball is, and and the discourse around coaches and narratives with coaches and all this stuff. Uh, in that, if that shot doesn't go down for USC, Mick Cronin wins the Pac-12, mm-hmm. and that's something that that's like a bullet point on his resume. Not only for this year, because mm-hmm. it's like an incredible job he did to turn the team around and win the Pac-12, but that's like something that gets brought up five years from now when people are like, we should fire Mick. Mm-hmm. Then the guys that are behind him are like, we can't fire him. He won, he won the, the Pac-12, Pac-12 in year, year one. Yeah. Like That's like a bowl of – all from one shot. Mm-hmm. Like if it, it bounces differently, then suddenly like he like five years from now, the impact of that is still going on. And it just like it's hilarious when you really stop and think about like coaches that were at small school that won one NCAA tournament game and were given – $3 million a year for five years at, at big schools and we're in over their heads, you know, shock is smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up the phone. Like all the, all that stuff that happens and the coaches that get fired because the shot doesn't go down. It's mm-hmm. going to happen this year. There's going to be a coach. Like it might be shock is smart. Mm-hmm. They play Texas tech in the first round of the big 12 tournament. They might lose on a buzzer beater. And because that shot doesn't go down, shock is smart gets fired. If it does go down, Texas makes the tournament. Uh, maybe they win a game or two. Shockey keeps his job. It's it's all just so insane. And I'm not saying like I feel bad for the coaches because they know what they sign up for. It just like it highlights just how crazy this stuff is, and that's why we love it. Here's my number one example of that. In 2015, Bryce Alford shot an air ball for UCLA, the Bruins, yeah. against SMU in the NCAA tournament. I remember. And they called a goaltending call to let them win that basketball game. And if Larry Brown had won that game. Yeah, who knows where SMU well, that, would be? That was a good thing for Alford because, like, like people. Yes, like, it was brought, exactly. Brought it, it, was it was the like, opposite of this. The exact thing I said. Yeah, people were still bringing it up. They're like, "You went to however many Sweet Sixteens?" And it's like, "Well, the one doesn't count, and the other one doesn't count." No. <laughs> <laughs> Just doesn't. Just count. throw asterisks yeah, yeah. on all participation. Those. None of those count. Um, yeah, but congratulations, Mick Cronin. Uh, having a having a season that no one knew anything about until he came on this program, and we told everyone about it, and then they voted for him for Coach of the Year. So you're welcome, yes. Mick. Media manipulation. <laughs> the, we love you, Coach. The uh, the OSP bump has become the TNT bump. Um, what is that? It that's the Pac-12 update. Yeah. Also, I just want to point out the Arizona Twitter account, a players program, is also a people's program. They go after the people that call out Sean Miller and this program. There was some. Do they really? Basically, uh, Zeke Naji was uh, Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, and this was I think Sean Miller tied for the most Pac-12 Freshman of the Year since 2004. You know, a Pac-12 update. Yeah, yeah. You know, of the day basically is what they put out, and then the comments were basically, "I don't care what Sean Miller does <laughs> with these freshmen." Get rid of him, and then they hit him with the stats, you know, like most regular season, Pac-12, you know, da-da-da, all this other stuff. And it just made me think, you know, I I at one point thought that, you know, Arizona maybe was turning on Sean Miller, Mm -hmm. but it seems like they've not only doubled down, tripled down, whatever amount of times down, they're still in the bag with Sean Miller. And that, you know, that says (laughs) something. Congratulations, Sean. Pun very much intended on that one. Um, All right, Pac-12 update. That's it. Uh, it. I want to do this before we get out here, before we get to shout-outs and closeouts. And I don't mean to set it up as though we're almost done with the show because we're very much not. But um, this is kind of the last big thing I wanted to do. Uh, We've been doing a theme throughout the season. Every so often we'll check in. uh, And and it started when everyone was playing horribly like to start the year, where we were having all these upsets. Mm -hmm. And you and I were trying to assess, like, what is this year of college basketball? And I I brought up the idea of, like, if you're a fan of all these teams – which team would you point to and be like, I like my team. I like this team. I like I like the way we're playing right now. And the the point I was trying to make was there was like th- maybe three fan bases that were happy mm-hmm. with how their team was playing, you know, in early December or whatever it was. Um, Ohio State being one of them at the time. Yes, I was very, exactly. very happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we, we revisited a, f- a couple times just that idea of like, 
how many fan bases are actually happy because it feels like there's a lot of sky is falling from a lot of different fan bases. Um, and we know how fandom works. You know, there, there's yeah. a denial that comes with fandom where you can say to yourself, look, I don't know what I know, but I know that no gel Eastern, when push comes to shove, he yeah. may – he may step up. I don't know you what I know, it. but Rocket Watts might bank in some threes yeah. tonight. Yeah. I do know this. Justin Robinson should never make threes in a basketball game, but I'll leave that aside. Uh, yeah, um, let's run through them. The 25. So, yeah, the I, wanted, I wanted to revisit the final. I, this is, is this the final? They do one more AP pool before the tournament, I think. But uh, the final one of the regular season. Yeah, After we'll the regular that. season yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ended, um, I want to rip through the twenty five, the top 25, and we're going to give – here's how we're going to do this. We're going to try to rapid fire as best we can. Uh we're just each going to give our own thumbs up or thumbs down. You can give like a comment or two on, mm-hmm. on why, but um, makes makes enough sense. Yes. And remember, the premise is not like, do you believe in this team to win a title? Do you think – it's not even do you think the fans like this team. This is I'm asking you personally, if you were a fan of your team, do you like where your team is at going into the tournament? And and as you'll see, I because I'm going to explain as I go through this, like it varies. Part of what makes college basketball cool is like, all these programs have different standards of what being good is. So, like, some teams are going into the tournament. They're like, I really like our chances to make a Sweet 16. We haven't been there in 58 years. That would be that would be really dope if we did that. Whereas, like, Kentucky's like, if we don't win the title every year, the sky is falling. So, uh, keep that in mind. That is the premise. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, Tate. Um, we start with number 25, Iowa. Your thoughts? Thumbs up because they have a guy by the name of Luca Garza, which yeah. they love, and they feel like he is the face of their program. I think Joe Wisecamp is a guy that you know we is a familiar face, right? If you watch Iowa play, you're like, okay, mm-hmm. I represent that guy. C.J. Fre- Frederick was freshman of the year, I think, in the Big Ten as well. So look I, at you, look you at did this. some research. How about this, Iowa? Right, yeah. a your team, thumbs up, thumbs up. They love right. it. I I am also a thumbs up. Iowa, uh, they don't play defense. It's a problem. I don't I don't believe in them in for like a deep tournament run. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you're an I, if I'm an Iowa fan, I'm saying this season has been a ton of fun. Luca Garza is the first Hawkeye to win Big Ten Player of the Year. He's going to be a first team All American. Uh, that all of that is fun. And Iowa has not been to the Sweet 16 since 1999. So I like I like Iowa's chances of making the Sweet 16. And not that that is like the ultimate goal for the program. But if I'm an Iowa fan, you're saying to yourself, it's been a really long time. I think we can get there this year. This is going to be a fun tournament, and I'm I'm giving them the thumbs up. And you have to know that Luca Garza is coming back next year. So if you go to the Sweet Sixteen, they're going to be better year, next year. Yeah, exactly. They're going to be better. They're going to be an even better, better team. A uh, all go. right, number twenty four, Butler. Kamar Baldwin just hits the game winner at, at Xavier. Um, they they had a really rough February. They were up and down. They were ranked mm-hmm. fifth at one point in the season. Uh, uh, they, they I think they're on a three game winning streak right now. Yes. But, Beat St. Um, John's. I'll Beat go Xavier. first. I'm doing a thumbs down. I don't. I don't think Butler. If I'm a Butler fan, because you're coming. Like again, we're we're doing this all with context. Where like, you just went to the Sweet 16 in, in 2017. Uh, Chris Holtman's last year. Butler has like a certain standard of like what they want. Like this isn't a bad Butler team by any stretch of the imagination. They can be really really fun to watch. But if I'm a Butler fan, I'm not saying like, I'm not rubbing my hands saying like, let's get this tournament started. I'm mm-hmm. ready to see what our boys can do. So I'm gonna say thumbs down. A slight thumbs down. I'm gonna say thumbs up because okay. we talk about Kim McCandidates, and I think Kamar Baldwin is one of those guys where. When push comes to shove, I'm going to keep saying that because I feel like in college basketball, it's it can get so ugly. There's a lot of pushing and shoving in the times just to keep things even. Kamara Baldwin can hit big shots and big moments, and I think this Butler team, they have a good test in the first round of the Big East tournament because they play Providence, which is probably the hottest team, quote-unquote, maybe in the Big East. Yeah. Some people would say in America. I'm not One sure of, I, yeah. I, I buy all that, but I'm yeah, like— They're like seven hottest teams in America right now. They've won yeah. six straight yeah. games, so everyone's like, they're hot. Yeah. And I like the, the matchup with Butler there because, like I said, they've had their cardiac moments. You know, Baldwin's been in these big spots. He's hit big shots all season so I, I feel good I think you have Baldwin and uh, maybe that's one guy that's not going to be uh, enough to make a real run but sweet 16 thumbs up okay all right uh, number 23 Houston um, they've lost three of six the wheels aren't I wouldn't say the wheels are falling off maybe that's a little strong but the American is not a good conference this year Tulsa want to share Tulsa is not going to make the tournament unless they uh, win the conference tournament that seems to be I'm not a bracketologist but that's what the bracketologist we brought are, that up on the last yeah. show which is like what's going on here Why that's the we state of in? the American mm-hmm. um, and and Houston did win a piece of the American but uh, they, they were in the Sweet 16 last year mm-hmm. with Corey Davis was, was the best player on that team you, you might remember um, they was it the year before in 2018 they should have made the Sweet 16 Jordan Poole Jordan Poole shot mm-hmm. happened uh, I feel like Houston has elevated themselves as a program. This is not a team that I would be excited about. I don't think this team is like any better than like recent Houston teams. So I'm saying thumbs down because, uh, again, the, the standard has just been raised so high that like being ranked 23rd in the country with a team that's lost three of six is not something I'm super excited about. 
I'll say this. I agree with all those points you just made. I'm not really a believer in the actual Houston basketball team, but I am a believer in their head coach, Kelvin Sampson. So thumbs up. Mm. Thumbs up. Look at you just dishing out thumbs ups. I love it. Uh, number 22, West Virginia. Mm. They, uh, I, I will say the wheels fell off, but they, they salvaged it. They beat <laughs> Baylor. They did just beat Baylor. So where do you stand on them? I would say this. Uh, this Bob Huggins team, this Bob Huggins outlook, I think is perfect for a West Virginia run. You know, kind of reminds me. I, I said it earlier in the year when they beat Ohio State. I was like, maybe they're a 2010 type West Virginia tough team. Mm. But like you said, the wheels fell off. But the wheels may be back. And I think that, you know, Huggins and Izzo, some of these veteran coaches, they like to create like we manufactured the, adversity. Exactly. Yeah. But they like the downturn. You know, like yeah. that's their favorite part of the year. They like yeah. when the players turn against them, but then they also have to turn they back. They like to, to them find to get the rock guidance. bottom because it's a yes. great foundation to build on. Well, and exactly. And if you're it. down sixteen yeah. in the tournament, you're like, Boys, we've been here before. Yeah. We've this been is, here like, before, this is yeah. like when yeah. you failed your test, Kamar. You know what yeah. I mean? Earlier in the year, whatever they yeah. say. Uh, uh so I would say this. Thumbs down to West Virginia because I don't really believe in this team. I had a lot of hope earlier in the year. Yeah. They kind of let me down, so I'll stay. I'll say I'm, thumbs. Down. I'm with you. Uh, they had a, they had a stretch where they lost six of seven in yeah. February. Uh, they, you know, again like West Virginia. If this was if this was Nebraska, maybe you're excited about this team. It's not. It's West Virginia. You get, they go to the Sweet Sixteen. It seems like every tournament. Um, I think the Baylor beating Baylor is the the pinnacle of the season for them. I think that's going to be it. I think you beat Baylor, you storm mm-hmm. the court. It's a it's a fun time. We're singing country roads, mm-hmm. all that. But uh, I think that's the end of the line. Maybe maybe they win a game in the tournament, whatever. But uh, if I'm a West Virginia fan, I'm not I'm not really that excited. And we know Huggy Bear awesome. likes Bill Self, so I think he liked the idea of beating Baylor and letting Bill Self yeah, get that win. Yeah, right. So. Uh, number 21, Illinois. They've won five of six. Uh, Desumu is is balling out of control. Like mm-hmm. The guy is is playing at a, at a first-team All-American level the last couple weeks. I'm doing a very thir- firm – Thumbs up on the Illinois Fighting Illini. They have not made the Sweet 16 since 2005 mm-hmm. when they lost to your beloved North Carolina Tar Heels in the title Dean game. Dean Brown, Luther um, Head, Roger Powell. It's been a long road for Illinois to get back. I feel like if you're an Illinois fan, you're very excited about this and you feel like the Illini are back. Whatever back means, they're back. So I, I am a very firm, firm thumbs up. Look at you. What do you got here? They're back. Oh, you got a shirt. They're back and better than ever. Nice. Coffee Coburn. Look at you. Big Ten Freshman of the Year. We love this man. We All love right. this team. Darren Williams is back. Underwood is back. Like mm-hmm. we said, I mean, he's signing the fa- like. They're doing everything that you want to be a meme moment. Like mm-hmm. this Illinois team, everyone's buying in. I think, uh, yeah, like uh, Dusumu, he was basically he was the media's pick, right, for uh, first team. Yeah, Big first 10, team. It was, but it not was, the coach's pick. I mean, I like, like that. I like the yeah, controversy I, yeah, there. Yeah, I think Illinois is a chip on their shoulder, so I'm all in on Illinois. All thumbs, right. thumbs to the max. That's two thumbs up for Illinois. I uh, brought a shirt. That you they did bring sent a shirt because yeah. I was like, I love Illinois this year. That's great, and you it's held my it up. Favorite team in the Big Ten. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, if you're watching that. right now, you're like, "Wow, this guy has a shirt." <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, all right, number twenty, Auburn. Um, lost four of seven. Thumbs down. Yeah, I, I thumbs thumbs down as well for me. Uh, you just went to the Final Four. Like this team is is it, Auburn fans love this team. So the, again, the, I'm not speaking on behalf of Auburn fans because if I was, I would remember say, 22 and two. That was a good yeah. start to the year. Just yeah. remember those moments. If I was speaking on behalf of Auburn fans, I would say huge thumbs up because they do love their team. They love the Bruce Pearl wins 25 games. They don't, they pay no attention whatsoever to what kind of schedule they're playing. They pay no attention whatsoever to how bad the SEC is. All they know is that they're a football school. They never win 25 games. All of a sudden Bruce Pearl's winning 25 games. They love them. Um, I I have watched college basketball for more than three years of my life, so I'm kind of like more in tune with <laughs> what this team actually is. I don't think Auburn's very good, um, but they've had a they've had a fun year. They've won 25. They have a good record. They finished second in a horrible SEC, three games behind Kentucky. So good for you, Auburn. Hang the banner, second place. Uh, but you went to the Final Four last year. This is not a team to be excited. Yeah, give about. yourself Thumbs a rest. Down. And uh, at the end of the day, when you look at this team and you look at Bruce Pearl and what he's been able to do, like you said, you'll remember the good times of this. Yeah. But Kim Palm has hated him all year. He's yeah, never had him in the top 30. So They're currently the 34th on Kim Palm. They're the second lowest ranked team in the top 25. Uh, in the top 25, the AP poll, they're the second lowest team on Kim Palm. We're going to get to the lowest team here in a second. Mm-hmm. Here in a few teams, actually. But, uh, yeah, Auburn. Auburn has never really been that good. They've just won. <laughs> so and uh, it's gone. Uh, number nineteen, Ohio State. I'll let you go first. Okay, Ohio State is a team that, again, you know, uh, had the chance. Well, they were the best team in the country in December. John Calipari yeah, told us it. to our face. He said they were the best team in the country. They have the talent. We've seen them play at a high level, but we've also seen Chris Holtman. I, w- I wouldn't say unhinged, but I like that Chris Holtman is affected by the conversation. You know what I mean? And that the, the beef with Turgeon, yeah, the, the, the bulletin the board material night, yeah. that Chris mm-hmm. Holtman is willing to put in front of his team's face to get them to play hard. 
I don't know why I like it, but I like it. Thumbs yep. up. I think uh, if I was an Ohio State fan, hypothetically, mm-hmm. uh, I, I am a very unbiased journalist, so I don't actually pick sides, and I'm not a fan of any team. Mm-hmm. But in, in a hypothetical world, if I cared about Ohio State at all, um, I actually am kind of excited about the tournament, and I'm going to tell you why, Tate. <laughs> you're just holding up your Illinois shirt. It's of Illinois. <laughs> That's why you're excited. Uh, Ohio State has come back a little bit. They're not they're not the best team in the country. Um, like you said, they were or whatever. They have they haven't brought that. I didn't but say they have, that. John, John Calipari, Calipari said, said that. <laughs> you said you said what John Calipari yes. said. Yeah, it's the Michael that. Scott. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they've won ten of thirteen. They just lost to Michigan State. I know they kind of just got their asses handed to them. But I'm, but as I said, there's like cosmic forces at play in that game. They were never winning that. Um, and by cosmic forces, I mean Rocket Watts banking in threes. Uh, but no, it's it's it, this this has been a good year for Ohio State in the sense of like Chris Holtman trying to establish his culture, Chris Holtman trying to to uh, it, it's been a long road to the Sweet Sixteen. Twenty thirteen is that surprising to you? Ohio State has not made the Sweet Sixteen since twenty thirteen. Um, so I'm excited about that. I think you know knowing what Ohio State was earlier in the year, saying like the Sweet Sixteen is the ceiling does kind of feel like a l- little bit of a bummer. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I I think. Uh, that that's something to celebrate given the, the state up. or the program. So I'm going to say thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs but up. a reluctant thumbs up, like a very slight <laughs> thumbs up, but I'm optimistic. We're playing a little better. Yeah. In your mind, if you're trying to visualize what these and, thumbs up look like, it's Chuck Norris and dodgeball. Yeah. <laughs> it's that. Um, also, like I've talked myself into, I've done the thing where like you, you say, if we play at our best, we can win the national mm-hmm. championship, which it probably applies to 58 teams. <laughs> we're like, if we just play, if we play our abs- A plus basketball, mm-hmm. we're, we can beat anybody. And it's like, well, I mean, you could say that about pretty much any team in the country. Except for Purdue, because if <laughs> Purdue plays their best basketball, they will win. They will wipe they the will floor win. with everybody. That's for 100%. Uh, all right, number 18, Wisconsin. Thumbs it ha- up. It has to be a thumbs yeah, up. We thumbs don't really up. need to explain it. You won yeah. the Big Ten. You're, we you're hot we were as hell. going to fire Greg Gard at one point. Yeah. Kobe King, your second leading scorer, leaves the team, and then somehow you get better. We don't understand it, but we know you're the one seed in the Big Ten. That, that is a no-brainer. Thumbs up. That is a very, very firm thumbs up. And we're skipping over it, not out of disrespect. It's out of respect because it's just so clearly a thumbs up. Uh, number 17, Virginia. Where do you fall on this one? They have won eight in a rotate, but mm-hmm. seven of those eight wins were by one possession. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there's a team ranked lower than Auburn on Kim Palm that's ranked in the AP poll. It is Virginia. They are ranked 44th on Kim Palm. Usually Kim Palm the hates darlings. Them. Yeah, of Kim usually Palm. number one last year. Yeah, they won the title. I think here's what I'm going to say. I think you're excited if you're Virginia that the team has turned the corner in the sense that you're winning games, mm-hmm. uh, and and it looked a little rough there in the middle of the season. But given what you saw last year, given like you you won the national title, that's like the feeling you have. You, you now enter the tournament with like those feelings of like. That's this, that's what's at stake. We, we did, you have the 16th seed. Mm-hmm. You have the national title. Mm-hmm. Now, like, what 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 is going to have to happen to make you feel something? Because you've had both extremes. Um, I don't think this team is going to make you feel anything. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying thumbs down. Even though Virginia's hot, like I think smart Virginia fans are smart and they know this team's not that good. So they're just kind of like enjoying the ride. But they know that the the party's going to end. The, sh- the clock's going to strike midnight at some point. Yeah, best case that. scenario for me as a North Carolina fan, I would say uh, Richmond, the Spiders, they're a 12 seed. They play in Dayton, and then they have to play Virginia, a 5 seed, and then they upset Virginia. Mm. You're cheering against Virginia. Thumbs down. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, all right, now now we're starting the teams. I drew a line here on my sheet uh, because – We got to rip fat. We got to do We got to go we, faster. We, we just got to give them thumbs All right. I, I kind of don't even want to give my explanations. All right. Like, don't I even give get, your thumbs yeah, up. Well, don't uh, give your explanations. I, I, yeah, okay. Um, but this is this is where we're starting to get into the serious territory for yes. me but, uh, uh, of teams I think can win the national championship. Okay, 16, Seton Hall. Just Seton say. Hall. Kevin Willard upset that Creighton got to cut down the nets, even though they were champions as well. They did not get down the cut down cut down the nets in front of their fans. He thought that was a slight. I like that attitude. I'm haul in. Thumbs up. Uh, I am saying thumbs down. Two straight losses. Miles Powell's chucking a little too much for me. I, I feel like uh, – They've had a great season. Thumbs up to the season. First Big East title since 93. Thumbs down to where we're at right now entering the tournament. I'm saying a thumbs down because uh, I, I feel like they're not playing their best basketball. That's a good right thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, that's a, play both sides. Uh, number 15, Louisville. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, 14, BYU. Thumbs up. Your thumbs to the even, match. even though they just lost. We even just though they just them lost, blue. it made me believe in them even more because I think this team is fired. <laughs> even though they lost. They're fired up. You know they, what I mean? Since they look Jillich, great. Yeah, since Joey Childs good came loss. back, I mean, they're they're fired up as a team. They seem to believe in one another. And they got a little too high uh, after they beat Gonzaga. I felt like they thought that that was their message statement. Toulson, I follow him on Instagram. I keep up with all of his posts. Mm-hmm. They're hilarious. And he put out after the game, basically, he was like, 
This is our year. This is what we this, this is what is we do. Well, I will say this Thumbs is, up. This is the best team BYU had since 2011, which was uh Brandon st- Davies. Ruined by sex. Mm-hmm. Um so <laughs> you know, I in that regard, I think this is exciting times in in Provo. Very, very much a thumbs up, even in, in light of what we just witnessed in the loss to uh, uh, St. Mary. So I'm saying thumbs up as well. Number 13, Oregon. Thumbs up. Thumbs up as well. Won the Pac-12. You have a first-team All-American at point guard. Uh, I'm, I'm a little worried that Mathis and Richardson aren't giving him enough, aren't, aren't going to be consistent enough in the tournament. I, I could see Oregon getting upset, but um, I don't know. It's been a fun year, and you have a good team. And, and, and you have the best coach, I think, in the Pac-12. Dave yeah, Altman. and, and it's, all, it's all flowing for you, so, so that's good. Number 12, Maryland. Thumbs up for Jalen Smith. What? No, 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 no. Listen to me. Hold on. Thumbs up for Jalen Smith if he is the, the we're best not, version of himself. Right? We're not if, saying thumbs up Jalen Smith. I'm thumbs up if thumbs Jalen up Smith Maryland. is the best version of himself and isn't in foul trouble. Thumbs if, down everything else. So okay, The rest okay, of Maryland, all, right. all thumbs down. But if Jalen Smith is not in foul trouble and can play the, the majority of the game, let's say, let's give him 32 minutes or something like that, Jalen Smith and the, and the Maryland Terrapins can make a sweet 16. But other than that, thumbs down. Just I'm, say it. Thumbs down. I'm thumbs down. <laughs> and thumbs so down. you're you're officially thumbs down. Thumbs. I'm officially thumbs up. Thumbs you got to pick one or the other. Jalen Smith. I'm trying to keep record here of what you're picking, and uh, okay, we, we, Just America do it. needs an answer. Just do it. Thumbs you're, down. You're down. Okay. Uh, number eleven, Villanova. Thumbs up. You're up. Okay, I'm saying down because again, this is this is not a uh, an indictment on this team. This is like a standard situation mm-hmm. where Villanova's won two national titles. That's what Villanova fans are used to. Uh, Villanova enters the tournament. It's always feast or famine. That's what Jay Wright's famous for. If he makes it to the second weekend, he's winning the national mm-hmm. title. If he doesn't, he he, he lost to Dylan Ennis and NC State. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I feel like this is more of a famine team, um, even though they're good. Been a decent season, but this is not a this is not a feast team. But you're saying thumbs up, huh? Thumbs up because I think that Villanova, at the end of the day, they just kind of own the Big East. Like They just kind of lurk, and they don't own the big stage. They're like, yeah, we're better than you, Bang. All right, uh, moving on. We have Duke, number 10. Thumbs up. Whoa. Yes. And here's the only caveat I will say. Coach K is a guy that decided not to submit Vernon Carey, who was obviously the best player on Duke this year because he wanted Trey Jones to win the award. So it was a rig system. He wanted – That Vernon- is fantastic, by the way. Genius. I love that that is – Genius. This is like uh, – what it's basically what Dean Smith did with Michael Jordan. He thought he was going to come in and be on the cover of SI, and Dean Smith said, uh, I'm on the cover. <laughs> you stay at home. James Worthy's on the cover. This is what Coach K just did to Vernon Carey, which I, I, you know, in a world of college basketball where we take the one and dones and we put them on the pedestal without even really asking any questions, yep. I do like that Coach K gets in his subtle jab here where he's like, Trey Jones has been here, yeah. and he's the player of the year. But Thanks, Vernon. Are you worried about chemistry on the team now? Because yes. Vernon, like, how is Vernon Carey? Vernon Carey is a Carolina basketball player, right? Like, yeah. after, like <laughs> the, the first game, he apologized to Roy Williams for beating him in that game, you know? And I think Coach K saw that. He was like, he'll never win, you know, player of the year. Because for people that are saying Coach K doesn't let rookies win – Oh, Marvin Bagley existed. I don't know. I guess America <laughs> forgot that he played at Duke and that he was the best player in college basketball. But he yep. was there. He was player of the year. So Vernon Carey, I think there's a chance there could be some chemistry off, but also Duke is going to make a real run. I, I say thumbs down. I say if if I'm a Duke fan, I'm looking at this team. I still, I've been saying it all year. I think this is the worst team since 2007 that Duke has had. I do not like this team. Mm-hmm. I haven't really liked them. Even when they pull off their big wins, I still don't really like them. Um Coming off of if last year's team can't make the final four, and I'm, I'm if I'm a Duke fan, I'm saying we couldn't make the final four with Zion and RJ Barrett and Cam mm-hmm. Reddish. I, we're not making it with with these these clods. It's just not happening. Mm-hmm. So they, which means they probably are going to win the national championship. Yes. But going into the tournament, where I'm standing right now, I'm saying thumbs down. Uh, number nine, Michigan State. Thumbs up. Big fat thumbs up. Uh, it's all happening. It's all falling into place for Michigan State. We've already kind of covered that. We don't need to to, to belabor <laughs> that point. Number eight, Kentucky. Thumbs down. Thumbs down as well. Despite all the people that think their comeback was so inspiring against Florida, I think that's a concerning thing because as much as I love Florida and I think they're a good team, they're still not a good team. They're not a good team. The SEC is not good. Mm-hmm. I don't. I mean, like it's congratulations, Kentucky, but you have a higher standard than that. You know that. I will say, Cal tweeted on Sunday, "I like my team." He mm-hmm. literally said, "I like my team," and it was a picture of his team. Mm-hmm. That has me. It gives me pause. My guys. Yeah. They're his guys now, mm-hmm. so that gives me pause. But then you go to Ken Palm, which is is gospel mm-hmm. in college basketball circles, and uh, Kentucky is sandwiched in between Rutgers and Minnesota. Just chew on that, Kentucky fans. I know Rutgers is good. I know Minnesota is better than their record suggests, and they have a, a lottery pick that's their best player. Mm-hmm. But just just think about that. That's the state of Kentucky basketball right now. Is you are about as good as Rutgers and Minnesota. That's a big fat thumbs down for me. Thumbs down. Uh, number seven, Creighton. Thumbs down. 
Whoa. Because of injuries. And okay. because of the fact that I think, you know, in the Big East, they've had to just kind of run through the gambit a little bit. And they've had to almost... I don't know. They've had to do a lot this year with the Creighton team having to put it all on the line. I think a lot of people are buying in on them. I don't like the hype around them. I don't like the injuries, even though if they are playing the long game of like we're playing for the real tournament. Yeah, a very McDermott move. That it would if be. he did, if he ended up doing that, uh, I still say thumbs. Up. I say thumbs up because Creighton has not made a Sweet Sixteen since 1974. That's pretty shocking. That's shocking. If you really think about that it. Is shocking. And uh, I think that is that would be like winning the national championship for them. I don't mean I'm not saying that. That's not like a Bill Titus like backhanded compliment mm-hmm. that he has for Purdue fans. Mm-hmm. That is like a legitimate, like I do think Creighton fans would be ecstatic if they can finally get over that hump. Uh, and I think this team is in a good position to do that. So I'm saying thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, number six, San Diego State. <sighs> this is this a is tough, tough one. It's very yes, tough. This is I, tough. I went down there and I'm thinking to myself, 100% thumbs up. Watch them play, I'm thinking thumbs down. 100% thumbs down. I then I watched them in the tournament against Utah State. I actually liked the way they played. I think Malachi's kind of found his footing a little bit mm-hmm. despite what we saw in person. Still going to go thumbs down, though. I think I have to go thumbs down Because they're well. a two I don't seed want officially to. now, and who this knows? Is, they may slip. This is taking your dog behind the shed and, and crying as you shoot it, but like that's what I'm doing here. Is I, I have to just, I, I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I said <laughs> thumbs up. It's, it's a thumbs down for me because the last six, they're four thumbs and two down. in the last six. After starting the season, what was it? 28 and 0, 20 whatever it was in 0, 26 and 0, I think it was. Um, they're four and two in their last six, and they have been tied or down at half in the four wins. So they've lost two of those games, and even the four that they won, they were either tied or down at half. They've not been playing well. It the seems last like six they're games. treading water at yeah, this point. Yeah. It's bad. Uh so two thumbs down on, on San Diego State. Number five, Baylor. Baylor seems like a team that uh, has reached the pinnacle in the season a little bit. You know, we kind of crowned them early on. They're they are, in my opinion, the mid two thousands Wake Forest of this season. They are a Baptist team that's going to reach the pinnacle and then fall apart as soon mm-hmm. as the tournament comes. The second round loss seems inevitable at this point. But before that happens, I really want Baylor to make a Big Twelve tournament run. You know, just get yeah. just win the tournament. So thumbs up because I want them to win the tournament. Thumbs up, thumbs okay. up because I want to believe. I'm saying thumbs down because, like you said, uh, they've <laughs> lost three or five. Apart. It yeah. feels like it, this Baylor team feels like Roger Bannister running the four minute mile, uh, where the guy runs the first four minute mile, Tate, and then like immediately everyone starts running four minute miles. They said it was impossible. They said it couldn't be done. Then the guy does it, and everyone's like, oh, it's not impossible. Now I can do it. That's like Baylor. Kansas, Kansas showed people that uh, all you have to do to beat Baylor is set middle ball screens. <laughs> um, the no middle defense. What if you got it into the middle? Mm-hmm. And then America was like, Poof. wait a second, what? Say and that, Bill Self was like, say that slower, I Bill have Self. to explain this yeah. again? <laughs> Holly Rose jotting down notes. Um, I feel like that's what's happened with Baylor uh, yeah. is, is, is now that everyone's seen teams beat Baylor, they're just going to keep beating Baylor. And uh, it's been a great season. But as I said, this is a Scott Drew season. This is a quintessential Scott Drew season. No trophies, ton of wins. Mm-hmm. Is he a good coach? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I'm saying thumbs down. Uh, number four, Florida State. Thumbs up. Leonard Hamilton, Gastonia, yeah. North Carolina native, a guy that uh, has been all over the map, a guy that has taken a team like Florida State to the fact, you know, basically to the top of the ACC as far as talent, just the yeah. talent pool of guys they bring in. We've seen it over the years. Terrence Mann, Johnny Isaac, you can get on the list of all those guys. Derwin Kitchen, even I back in I feel like the Florida days. State always recruits guys that, like, aren't being recruited by anybody else. Mm-hmm. And they're not even bad players. I just feel like they have, like, a different database or something. It's like, yeah. It's like they subscribe to like a different like the the that everyone subscribes to like an Apple database like everyone uses a Mac and that mm-hmm. only gives you access to like certain players and like Leonard Hamilton's like the one guy using Windows and like that opens up a whole another database of recruits or something because yes, like it's, I, it's I feel a continent like, it's called Africa. Andrew Wiggins is the only guy I can think of that had Florida State because his parents went there. That was like a five star guy that was like I may go to Florida State. I may like yeah. has Florida Mitchell State. Wiggins, yeah, I'm yeah. sure there's a ton of other other guys, mm-hmm. but like none of the guys that go to Florida State are like it, it seems like none of those guys are guys that were on Carolina's radar and Duke's mm-hmm. radar and Kansas and Kentucky. But they all can ball out and they're all like the NBA bodies and so mm-hmm. so good. So where the hell do they come from? How does he do this? Well, even like a Malik Beasley type, you're kind of yeah. like, where did this guy come from? This yeah. guy's a first round pick, and then you go through it and you're like, oh, because usually when you, IMG, usually you when you talk yeah. about like three star recruits, like you, mm-hmm. you get like the John Beeline talk, where he's like, you know, Beeline specializes in finding the diamonds in the rough. They're usually guys that are like slow, short white guys, or, or you know, mm-hmm. there, there's something obviously flawed with them when you look at them from a physical standpoint. Exact opposite is true of Florida State. You look at those guys, you're like, how the hell did this guy? 
get to Florida State? How did this happen? And Leonard know. Hamilton is a, an ageless wonder, to say the least. He is Coach Ham, and he also won the regular season yeah. for the first time in the ACC. Congratulations, uh, Coach. Thumbs up for me thumbs as well. Uh, number three, Dayton. Thumbs up. Thumbs what, up. Uh, yeah, just, just, just move on. We don't need to, yeah, we don't, need to, we don't need to belabor that one either. Uh, have not lost in regulation. 20-game win streak. Yeah. Number two, Gonzaga. Thumbs up. Thumbs up for you. Only okay. lost twice all season. Uh, I think they're fourth nationally in three-point percentage. Fifth and two point percentage, and uh, they have the best offensive offensive efficiency in the country, according to Kim Palm. Boom, Gonzaga. Uh, I up. I think Gonzaga is good. I think they're in a good position to win a national title, but uh, I just can't get over like last year's. I, I've said this a million times, but mm-hmm. like I feel like last year's Gonzaga team beats this year's Gonzaga team by thirty. And if I'm a Gonzaga fan, I know that. And like I'm I'm excited about the tournament because you're always excited about the tournament if you're a mm-hmm. Gonzaga fan because you have certain hurdles to climb. You've been to one Final Four, but now can you go to another? Can you win a national mm-hmm. title? Can like there are still things to be playing for, but uh, that's just in the back of my head of like some small part of you is like, man, if this team wins the title and we've had like ten teams better than this team in the last twenty years, mm-hmm. come on, that's not fair to to Morrison, right? That that Morrison doesn't get to win a title, but these guys do. Come on. I think that's where I'm at with this team. So I'm going to say thumbs down, but that's not to say I think they're bad. That's just like that's where I'm at with the uh, my mindset. Does that make sense? Yeah, to give you a quote, uh, Bill Self said this the other day. He said, we went to the Final Four a couple of years ago. I felt good about that team. The two years prior, I thought we had the best team in America both years, and we lost both years in the Elite Eight. So, yeah, I felt good about a team before. And yeah. I think that's the best way to put it. Once you get to these top cream of the crop teams, yeah. you know, there's not a lot of you know line of devi- deviation, except for Kim Palm, which I want to break down. Kim Palm's always right. He's yeah. only wrong a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let's wrap this thing up. Kansas, okay. number one. Yes, thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. Big fat thumbs up. I feel like uh, as more time has gone by, as I've watched Kansas more, uh, we watched them squeak out a win at Texas Tech, who I, I still think is – they're probably not the, – Texas Tech and Purdue is going to be the greatest NIT game of all time, I think, when, when that happens. Uh, as I watch more Kansas, I've, I've, I've come to, to have the thought, Tate, that the, this tournament is shaping up to be Kansas versus the field. I'm not quite there yet, but we're like getting close to that territory. They won like, the Big Twelve by two games. It seems like yeah, you they started kind of figured look, it out with Doak being the main guy yeah. for their team. Marcus Garrett is starting to step up, hit a big shot uh, last week against Texas Tech. And also, I thought it was funny that Bill Self told them that Baylor lost after the under eight timeout, and then they played and won that game. So once they have the the mental edge or whatever, and he's able to get and connect with this team, they can make a real run. So Kansas. Thumbs up. Uh, all right, you want to do a recap here? Yes, please. You want me to recap the ones that we all that we agreed on? Maybe yes. that's the way we do it. There you all go. Right. So here's here's what we agreed on. We both said thumbs up for Iowa. We both said thumbs down for West Virginia. Illinois is a thumbs up. Auburn's a thumbs down. Ohio State's an up. Wisconsin's an up. Virginia's a down. Louisville's down. BYU's up. Oregon's up. Maryland's down. Uh, Michigan State is up, Kentucky's down, San Diego State's down, Florida State's up, Dayton's up, and Kansas is up. Those are the ones we agreed on. So there you have it. Lock That's the in. state of college basketball. Shout outs and closeouts before we get out of here. Quickly, I just want to say uh, to the world of uh, everyone out there, we thought that we'd be at the Big East tournament. Uh, some things have changed, but we're gonna ke- we're gonna cover college basketball no matter where we don't know where we'll be we're we're, we're gonna be somewhere quarantine somewhere yeah we don't we know might be in graves but we will be Who talking knows? about it somewhere so please find us uh and let's I just stay safe out there out. yeah everyone stay safe. let's stay yeah. stay i saw like Kay and uh roy were bumping elbows yeah honestly to... there's nothing that hurt me worse than coach k's corona dap at the end of that game i'm <laughs> like I, I don't have time for this uh <laughs> So um, I want to I want to shout out Archie Miller for a great press conference mm-hmm. clip, uh, calling Joe Lenardi Oscar the Grouch and saying go back in the trash can and Sesame Street. It's a Sesame Street show. It was a really really good rant, kind of an unnecessary rant, kind of a low blow on Lenardi. Lenardi takes too much crap. I think mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to stick up for Joe. He's a good guy. Yeah, like he he invented the science. He invented bracketology. Mm-hmm. Like the guy's probably wrong a lot. I don't know. I don't pay enough attention. I don't mm-hmm. actually care because when the real bracket comes out, I don't care enough to go look at what Joe said was going to happen. But he's a we love him. He's like a he's like a mall Santa Claus. We roll him out one month a year, and mm-hmm. everyone loves him. Takes your picture with him and all that. And yeah, we, don't think too much about it. And we throw him back in the bunker and yeah. wait eleven more months. You the Pee Wee Herman model. Yeah, like we, I mean? the, yeah, he's the not play. evil. You don't have to lash out at him, Arch. But it was a good. It was a nice little rant there. It was um, good for Archie in Indiana. I think they need that curmudgeon statement. Uh, also, shout out to Ashton Hagens for the uh, the video of him mm-hmm. flaunting his money. Um, that was fantastic. We needed that in college basketball. We we needed the Louisville. Bring the bag back. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we need. Bring it all back. It, it, it uh, 
the Louisville fans dug it up, and then Kentucky fans are saying it's not a big deal. It doesn't mean anything, and you yeah, know, it doesn't mean anything. These, these are stories we love. Did you see Cal got ejected by the way, and then got allowed back into the game mm-hmm. at Florida? That was pretty funny. Um, what else you got? That's Coach Cal. That's what Coach Cal does. Uh, I pretty much just want to say Bill Self, at the beginning of the season, I felt like this was going to be the year of Bill Self, the redemption tour. He's done yeah. a really good job of solidifying the fact that Kansas is the best team, but they're not being, you know, very – they're not being loud enough, I would say. Yeah. Like, they haven't really just said we are the best Which team. is strange because they were very loud in the preseason. Exactly. Yeah. They wanted – like, I mean, Snoop Dogg, remember all this stuff going into it, but yeah. it seems like they're trying to, you know, stay off the scent until the final four hits and they're in Atlanta. There's no fans in the building and Bill yeah. Self can stay in the middle <laughs> and say, I'm the champion. Here I am. Um, That's my final shout-out. Shout-out to Bill My Self. My final shout-out is shout-out to uh, two Michigan men who are friends of the program, mm-hmm. uh, Duncan Robinson, who, first of all, Duncan is – you want to talk about a Titus and Tate bump. Mm-hmm. My God, this man, mm-hmm. he couldn't hit a shot. He famously was struggling all season to shoot, uh, was not a good shooter <laughs> until he came on this program, and now he won't miss. Uh, you're welcome for that, Duncan. You're welcome, America. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's 100 percent true. So he got the payback on Derek Jones. He didn't throw in the alley oop. Yeah, yeah. I, like, saw, I mean, that's but, he's got the confidence. Uh, I saw him and uh, Mo Wagner, who has not been on this program <laughs> but has uh, interacted with us many times. <laughs> <laughs> What's beef, Mo? Uh, did you see that that they got double text because Duncan shoved Mo Wagner? The, the Heat and Wizards played, mm-hmm. and Mo came over and started talking shit, and then Duncan shoved him, and then they teed them both up. It was pretty funny. And then they probably just gave each other a hug. Yeah. Like, they, yeah. But uh, Wagner classically just cuts in front of Duncan. Because there's a camera in the way, and Mo was trying to get in his way, and he pushed him, and it was a whole thing. We'd love to see it. Um. Oh, one more thing. Uh, the LMU job's open. I don't oh. know if you saw that. Who do we want there? Who needs to be there? You should be there. I think I should be there. Yeah, put it out That's there. That's literally the— It's literally right up the street. It's right by the there where we're at right now. It's the closest It's the closest Division One school to my place. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's I'm hard just, to find, you know, good pickup courts indoor. Uh, we might need that. I'm just in saying, LA. Uh, Coach, Coach Titus is making a comeback. He's dusting off the old whistle and clipboard, and uh, might be making a comeback. Uh, that's it. Oh, oh, one more thing. Uh, here's here's what we're doing. So uh, we are doing. We started. The, this mm. is this is. I'm excited about this. Um, we have a phone number that you can call uh, during the NCAA tournament and leave a voicemail. We want we want to try this out for the show during the tournament. Uh, that you basically, when your team loses and you get your heart ripped out and mm-hmm. you're sad and you want to vent to somebody and you want to cuss and, and yell or vent cry. Mail. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's called the vent mail. Mm-hmm. Is that what we're calling it? Vent mail. I like it. Yeah. Uh, we have a number that we want you to call and then we're going to play um, our favorites on, on the show maybe. I don't know. It depends. If we can tell you're acting, get, get out of our face. That's not the point of this. The point of this is therapy. The point of this is like <laughs> losing an NCAA tournament is the absolute worst and Every single, no matter how you lose, like you tell yourself, you get blown out and you tell yourself, like, man, it would have been so much better if we played. I like, I'm, I knew we weren't going to win the title, but I just wish we, when we lost, it would have been a close game. But then when you lose in a close game, you're like, God, this just sucks. We were out. right yeah, there. Yeah, just blow just me blow out. Me out no one is, uh, no one is ever happy with uh, when you when your team loses. So we set up a voicemail. We want you to call in. Just complain to us. Uh, we will be your therapist. It, it it it's all it's all good. So here's the number. Write this down, folks. 302-470-8283. Um, that will be the number that you can call. 302-470-8283. I wish it was a jingle. We need a jingle. The last four numbers actually spell out Tate, I was told. <laughs> which I think they did just to piss me off. But uh, 302-470-8283. Call that number when your team loses. Maybe they lose in the uh, conference tournament. and, and Or maybe they never lose. Been call and gloat. And yeah. It's changed the whole thing. That could be it, too. You beat Ohio State, and you want to shove it down my throat. You beat North Carolina in the CBI, and you want to rub it in the Tate's We're not face. playing in any tournaments because <laughs> of uh, safety concerns. You can do that. Also, uh, send in your dirty laundry, titusandtate at gmail.com. We're going to be reading those on Friday. Uh, I swear to God we're bringing that back. I, I don't mean to keep stringing everyone along. We are going to bring that back Friday. Uh, we're just we're just waiting to compile all the best ones. So send those in. Call us when your team loses. That's the show. We'll be back on Friday. Love you guys. See you. Access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports. Follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.